So, hello and welcome to another video from sickmouse.co.uk where you can find the whole of GCSE Maths Explained on video all for free. And you can find some super revision guides there. Okay, so when I say super, I mean like amazing, seriously. Like the whole GCSE explained in 18 pages and a bit at A5. Anyway, this video is about probability tree diagrams and tree diagrams basically look like this. They look like sideways trees, okay? These are, even in tree diagrams, they call these things branches. Can you see? So you've got two branches and then you've got branches coming out branches over here as well. You've got three branches and then three more branches coming out of each of those. So they look like tree di they look like trees that are sideways except for they don't have a bark in the middle, do they? Whatever you call it. Um, and what are they used for? Basically, you're just trying to show all the possible things that can have happen in your given situation. Like my given situation in the first example is the chance of um, winning winning chess or losing chess and then playing game of a pool and then winning that or losing that okay so let's quickly go through that particular example um, so I'm gonna play chess first and the chance of winning chess abbreviated to WC is two-fifths okay so I can either win chess or lose chess now notice it doesn't say lose chess because sometimes you have to uh, work on the assumptions. So if you win chess then the other option is lose chess unless they tell you you can draw as well. Okay? So the chance of winning chess is two fifths. That means automatically the chance of losing chess has to be three fifths because the probability should add up to one. Okay, so two fifths plus three fifths is one, so that's fine. Okay? Now remember tree diagrams are about, about are supposed to show you all the different things that could happen. So I could win chess, then win pool, or win chess, then lose pool, or I could lose chess, then win pool, or lose chess and lose pool. Those are the four different things that could happen. It's given that I can only win or lose a game, okay? And, and I'm not allowed to draw a game, okay? So once I've won chess, what's the probability um, now of me winning pool or losing pool? Well, it says the chance of me winning pool is a quarter. That means the chance of me losing pool is three quarters. And the same is here, okay? Whether I win chess or lose chess, it doesn't affect affect my gameplay in this given situation, and so the chance of winning pool and losing pool is the same as over there, okay? Now, in the real life, it might affect me. I might feel down after losing a game of chess, and it might affect the way I play pool, and it might change the probabilities. But in GCSE, we like to keep it really simple, okay? So just try to understand, and you should be fine in the exam. Okay, so that's the tree diagram, and so is this as we said before but one like tiny thing I'd like to mention that's important is that this is a nicer way to draw tree diagrams than that because it feels more connected okay this is a bit disconnected and some inexperienced students okay they tend to make more mistakes when drawing it like this okay they kind of spread it out too much it should feel like one tree but then again, I'm drawing it like this because sometimes you see it in the exam like this. Sometimes they draw the tree diagram for you and they draw it like this and they just say fill in the numbers or whatever. Okay, so let's move on to our second example. We're going to draw a tree diagram. We've got three green marbles, two white marbles, and one blue marbles, uh, one blue marble in a bag. And we're going to blindly, without looking, pick a marble. Then this is important. Then without replacing it, I'm going to pick a second marble. Okay, so this is how it works. There's three different things that could happen. I could either pick a green, white, or blue. Okay, I've got gre three green marbles out of a total of six marbles. Three plus two plus one is six. Okay, so the chance of picking a green marble is three out of six. The chance of picking a white marble is two out of six. And the chance of picking a blue marble is one out of six. Now, given that I pick a green marble. Remember, probability tree diagrams show all the possible things that could happen. I could get green, then green, then green, then white, or maybe white, then green. These are all the different things that can happen. You've got nine different things that are possible altogether. Okay, now, if I pick a green in the first pick, that means I've got only two greens left in the bag, two whites and one blue. Okay, so I've lost a green. And that also means, if I've lost a green marble, it actually o affects the overall total of marbles, of course. I've only got five marbles left. Okay, so that means the probability of getting a green here after I've picked a green is two fifths because I've got two greens out of the total out of a total of five marbles. Okay, but the probability of getting a white or a blue does not change if I pick a 
green first, okay? Because that because the number of marbles, number of white marbles, and number of blue marbles hasn't changed, okay? If I pick a green marble first, so that means the chance of picking a white marble after I picked a green is two out of five. Okay, but that be careful, be careful. That does not mean the chance of getting a green than a white. It's a slight difference. Independently, the chance of getting a green is that. Independently of that, uh, I say, um, you know that situations happen, but you pretend that. Uh, this is an independent event now, and you say, uh, uh, let's start from the beginning, and the chance of me getting a white is two-fifths, okay? But imagine you have to say, this happens, and then this happens. Remember, there's nine different things that can happen. So, for one thing to happen, and then the other thing to happen, it gets more and more unlikely as you go along the tree, because you have to, there's nine different things that can happen. The more things that can happen, the harder it is for any one of those things that to happen individually. So, what I'm trying to say is, for two things to happen together, okay, is to basically you have to do that times that, okay. So the probability of green than white is three six times two fifths. The probability of green than green is three six times two fifths. Well, same happens to be the same number. Probability of getting a green than a blue is three six times one fifth. Let's just do another random one. What's the probability of getting a blue than a green? It's 1 6 times 3 fifths. So you have to multiply the fractions as you go along the tree to get the probability of the thing at the end, which is in this case blue than green is the probability of this root. Yeah? Okay, well, by the way, you're looking at this, if you're looking at this 0, uh, the chance of getting a blue than a blue is 0 because you do 1 6 times 0. And that should be totally right because it's impossible to get two marbles when there's only one marble. Okay, now let's look at these uh, details here. What's the probability of getting a green then a white? Green and then a white, which is this one here. So 3 6 times 2 fifths. Okay, 3 6 times 2 fifths, which is 60 out of 30. 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 5 is 30. Okay, just in case you forgot how to multiply fractions. What's the probability of getting a green and a white? You might say, hang on, isn't that the same as that? that previous thing we just did, green then white, no, green then white means you have to get green and then a white in that order. Green and white doesn't tell you has to be in a particular order, you can get in or any order, you could either get a green then a white or a white then a green. Both those things, green then white or white then green, have the same meaning as getting a green and a white. Okay, so there's two ways of fulfilling this. There's only one way of doing that. Okay, so let's look at the probability of getting a green and then a white first of all, which just worked out sixty out six out of thirty, and the probability of getting a white then a green, a white then a green is also six out out of thirty because I have to do two six times three fifths. Okay, so overall probability of getting a green and a white is 12 out of 30. That's 6 out of 30. That's a 6 out of 30. Together they make 12 out of 30. Because remember, there's two ways of doing this. So the more ways there are of doing something, the more chance you can, you're going to win, or uh, you get what you wanted, or this probability. Okay. Because if there's nine things all together and you get you can choose two of them, you know there's more chance of uh, that happening than just having only one option of your thing happening. Okay. Now finally, so what I'm, let me quickly summarise that: the more ways there are of something happening, the more chance of those things happening. Obviously, so that means you should add those probabilities. So if green and white means two different things that can possibly happen then add those two possible things now finally what's the probability of not getting two whites or not getting both uh, marbles being white okay um, so that means I don't want a white then a white. That means I want everything else. I want green then green, the gre or green then white, then green then blue, or white then green, or white then blue. Everything except for white then white. Okay, that's quite a lot of different things. That means there's a good chance of it happening as well. Okay, now remember, I said all probabilities have to add up to one. Okay, so the chance of this happening, and then the chance of that happening, then the chance of that happening, and all these possible things 
things going through the whole tree. Okay, so the chances of green, green, and the chances of plus. Uh, sorry, let me put it like this: the chances of green, then green, plus the chances of green plus white, then white. Sorry, plus the chance of green, then blue, plus the chance of white, then green, plus the chance of white, then white, plus the chance of white, then blue, plus the chance of blue, then green, plus the chance of blue, then white, plus the chance of blue, then blue. All together is one. Okay, now if I simply want to work out everything except for the probability of getting a white than white, that's really easy. Since all of those have to add up to one, all I have to do is do one take away the chance of white than white. Gives me the answer of everything else. So the chance of getting white than white is two six times one fifth, okay, which is two out of thirty. So one take away two out of thirty is twenty eight out of thirty, and that's probability tree diagrams explained.